Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee and we have the overnight GFS model run in so let's take you through it and see what happens. And of course we have a little weak weather front that comes through here on Monday. Uh, some of the models are showing a few passing showers, no big deal. And here's the next more important storm that's coming uh, out of the southern Rockies uh, heading up uh, to Kansas City and then eventually the low goes west of Chicago probably bring some heavy snows to Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan as it takes a track well to the west and we get into showers and it gets very warm. I'm not sure how much shower activity we're going to get out of this, but we'll see. And I wouldn't be surprised to see temperatures climb well up into the 50s to around 60 ahead of this. Now, once it goes by, there are things that are happening. And first off, models have been kind of showing this idea of a wave at the end of the week which looks like it stays offshore on this run and you'll notice that there's a rather strong system that comes into the Great Lakes and as it moves along uh, it lifts up northward and you have a lot of energy and very cold air that moves into the Midwest and there's a front that goes through and it shows another wave now uh, this might be related to what the European was doing earlier which I'll show you in a moment um, that wave deepens somewhat as it goes east of New England. So now this is February 8th, and I've seen some, you know, chatter on the Internet uh, with regards to this, that that's one of the uh, storm signals that uh, a few people have been talking about. And then as we move on to February 10th and 11th, we have a more important disturbance that drops down that the model keys on uh, that forms a major storm in the east here, and you can see it there. You know, you can't focus on the specifics this far in advance. Who knows what that really is going to look like, but it, it turns very cold behind it. And then the pattern looks pretty active to me as we continue into the middle of the month with a, uh, apparently a couple of opportunities. However, they play out in the long range, also in the who knows category. But I want to go back to the day run European because this kind of stood out from the other models. And as we move it along, uh, I'm going to just go back a little bit. Uh, this is the the upper air map is in the color showing the jet stream flow. And as you get into the blues, of course, you're talking about the colder air aloft. aloft and there's a low that heads up to uh, the Midwest and beyond. And, and we can only see this in 24-hour increments here. But what this model does, that the other models did not do, is shows a strong southern stream feature uh, in all of this that somehow winds up getting resolved well that's the i'm sorry that's the midwest system that just went through my mistake um <clears throat> that's gone by that first one was actually the coal front now uh, it takes this southern another southern stream piece of energy back through here and uh, eventually resolves it into a, a deep low out in the ocean now, this actually does not look that different from the GFS that we just looked at for um, February 7th and 8th. And you can see how the European resolved it last night with this monster offshore low. Uh, and it would be a miss for the coast here or just barely grazing the coast. And then it moves out. So uh, to see the uh, GFS come into something like it is um, interesting, to say the least. And I want to look at the upper air pattern. And, you know, I, I resolved this in my uh, Joe Stradamus post today. We talked about it. There is a stream of energy here that the other models aren't picking up on, that the European shows this stream of energy that comes into the Rockies. And you have a polar vortex that's up here at Hudson's Bay. And you can see how the trough sharpens up as it gets close to the East Coast. Uh, the northern stream stays separate from the southern stream on the European run, and that's why you had this uh, big development here uh, just offshore. And then it's got another one that's coming around as this lifts up. So I'm not sure if this is how it's going to look. The GFS today, and we'll switch back to that, on the overnight run, has, I'm going to back it up a little bit. And one thing I want you to notice, by the way, as we go through this period, you're going to notice as each trough goes by, the, the actual axis, uh, the axis of the mean trough position, in other words, where the average trough is lining up, starts out at 90 and gradually moves eastward as every system 
moves by because you want that mean trough if you want to snow you want to see another snow event you want that mean trough closer to 80 degrees west and not 90 degrees west so as each one comes by it kind of swings it along and you can see here on this one it has it really doesn't pick up on that southern stream feature very much you kind of can find it here uh, sort of and then this northern stream feature just dives down and really takes over and you have development here at uh, M Monday, February 8th, and then that lifts up, and then you have another trough that rotates and digs down behind it, and that makes that major storm around the 11th, and then that lifts up, and you notice that the vortex stays pretty much intact here in Hudson's Bay, so we have this flow of cold air that is available, and here comes another system toward the end of the period, with, period here, which is going now into the middle of the month, so I mean, it's a pretty dynamic look all the way around, if you ask me, and I'm not sure it's going to be interesting to see what tonight's European run does um, with regard to this. But as we've been saying for the last number of days, that there's a lot of volatility in all of this. And you're going to see run to run switches, as you always do. So uh, we're inside day 10 with regards to whatever's going to happen come uh, the end of next week and the beginning of the following week. So we're going to start seeing models begin to key in on something. So. We'll see what the European does uh, during the overnight, and I'll post about it during the day on Sunday. Also, um, I'll do a separate video with regards to the polar vortex and the status of that and what that all means in the attack of the polar vortex part two, which is so much better than Star Wars. So have a good uh, day. Have a good Sunday. Enjoy outside with, with the temperatures uh, well up into the 40s and the mild weather over the next couple of days.